Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist and our mini series on being married to a Japanese person. As you might recall from previous videos on other topics we've talked about in Japan, how work comes before family. So in the decision making process and in society's expectations, usually work comes before family. So if you have some family event on that you want to go to, but the boss asks you to do the overtime, you do the overtime. Or if you have a plan already, you've already planned to do some family thing, and then at the last moment the boss says, no, come to dinner with the co-workers, usually people will go to dinner with the co-workers and just tell their family, sorry, can't come. <clears throat> and the family will understand because in some, in some societies, in some cultures, family come first. And, and you could go to the boss and say, oh look, sorry boss, already have an important uh, dinner dinner plan with the family, so I can't come to you know this work function. And the boss would go, oh, okay, that's fair enough. Whereas in Japan, you can't do that. So everybody sort of understands that and accepts it. So work is sort of a pretty much an across the board excuse to get out of anything in Japan because nobody argues it. If you say, I'm sorry, I can't come to the wedding because I've got to work, people just accept it. I can't come to the funeral because of work, people just accept it because it's considered that, that that always comes first in everybody's priorities. So so a classic and potent example of that is the transfer, work transfers. And if you are married to a Japanese person and they're working for a company and they get transferred, it is usual that they'll just go. You know, in some cultures and some societies, we could say, oh, look, I really don't want to go and live in that city because my family's got obligations here or my family's got a life here and I really don't want to go live in that other place. And usually you'll be given a choice. In most, most countries and in most companies, you might be offered a transfer and, and you might have a choice whether to accept it or not. Whereas in Japan, give you some examples lots of examples uh, there was one guy one guy who had two daughters one was 12 one was 14 he just bought a new house the daughters are at school he was cruising along quite happy in his job everything was really cool and comfortable and he was sort of he, he just sort of got everything set in his life that it was all very comfortable and cool and then the company just said to him we want you to go and, and work in South Korea for five years and when he, when he told me, I knew that he just finished set, setting himself up. And when he told me, it was like, I was sort of expecting that he was gonna say, well, no, I couldn't do it or something. And he didn't, he just said, I'm going next month. And that's it, he's off. And he's off and living in South Korea. And, and what happens usually is taking the family with, with you on these transfers is, is often not an option. And the, fa the, the companies don't usually figure on that or, or work that into it. And quite often in these other countries, they have apartment buildings that they own, that the staff live in, and they're usually only single person accommodation apartments. So they're not set up for families. So it's like you're going. And so that guy lives in South Korea now, and he comes back and visits once a year for a couple of weeks, sees his wife and his kids. For a couple of weeks a year, and spends the rest of his rest of his life in a working in South Korea. There's another one that we know who sort of similar story. Had two two kids, and he just bought a new house, and he actually had a small business of his own. He sold the small business, and and he bought a new house, and he he started work at a company in the city, and he'd been working there for about a year and cruising along, and they just said to him we want you to go work in Singapore. And he just went. And he's got two kids, they're younger, they're about eight eight and 10 or something like that. And and this new house, and he's just left his wife and his and his, these two kids and he's gone off to Singapore. And, and he lives in Singapore and comes home for a couple of weeks a year, around New Year, comes home for a couple of weeks and spends the rest of his time living in Singapore. You know, and you know, not particularly, not particularly special jobs either. Not like, you know, all oh, this job's gonna set me up for life type jobs, just sort of, you know, for, that, for the skills that that guy has, it's just sort of an average job. He could easily get another job like that in Japan. 
but for some reason, just, no, nah, okay, I'm off. And, and, and off he goes and he lives in Singapore and sees his, his kids, you know, for two weeks a year. It's just tragic, just tragic. And another one, another one, probably another, a, a more, for us what was a more amazing one, there's a, a, a lady we know, and she kept, a young lady, and she kept telling us about this aunt. And she's got this aunt that lives in Tokyo, and this aunt that lives in Tokyo, and this aunt that travelled to America, and travelled to Europe, and, and travelled travelled all around the place, and she works at a university in, in Tokyo, and, and she talks about her all the time. And we've got the impression that she was um, just a single lady living in Tokyo, you know? And she also, this same young girl also talks to us about her cousin, her cousin that lives in Nagoya. And she likes her cousin, spends a lot of time with her cousin, lives in Nagoya. And then recently, something she said sort of suddenly went click and, and wait a minute, are you saying that the aunt that lives in Tokyo is the mother of the 11 year old cousin that lives in Nagoya? And she said yes. And I was like, what? What? So. So the mother lives in Tokyo and comes down to Nagoya occasionally on weekends and comes down to Nagoya for a visit, but most of the time spends in Tokyo. And the daughter lives with, a, with the husband in Nagoya, but of course the husband's a Japanese worker, so he, he's never home. He's a, he goes to work early in the morning, comes home late at night, he's never home. So the 11-year-old basically lives her own life, never sees her mother. And then this is, this is what really hit this one home, is we've just come to the end of the summer holidays and the kids had five weeks holiday. So I asked her, does, does the aunt come and spend time with, with her daughter, right? Her 11 year old daughter. And she said, oh, this summer she's busy because she had to go to Bali and Hawaii and one other place, might have been Philippines or somewhere. Three countries in the last five weeks for work, she said, Hawaii, Bali and somewhere else. She had to go to these three countries for work in, during the summer holidays, which meant she didn't get to see her daughter. And no one seems to bat an eye. And, and I said, doesn't the daughter get lonely? Because usually young girls need their time with their mothers, you know? I mean, everybody likes time with their mothers, but usually, particularly young girls, usually time with their mothers is important. And I said, does she get lonely? Does the young girl get lonely? And she said, no, she, she goes to karate and she goes to juku. There we are again with the juku thing, living at juku. She goes to juku and she goes to karate and she, you know, she goes to club at school. So basically she's living this insular life at school. And it's just, nobody seems surprised by any of this. You know, the, the person who gets transferred just seems to go. And, and no one complains because that's part of the Japanese culture too. No one complains. They just go, oh, I've got to go and live in another country or I've got to go and live in another city. And they just go, off they go. And the, and the partner that's left behind, they don't complain. One of the partners told us late recently that she feels like a single woman now. And it wasn't sort of, I feel like a single woman now, like she was happy about it. She was just sort of mentioned in passing that she feels like she's a single woman now because, and as she should, as she would because her husband's never around. And it's just, it's just amazing. The, the person who leaves doesn't seem phased, they just off they go. And the person who stays behind uh, doesn't seem phased, they just accept it as well. And, and the kids just, oh yeah, well he's gone. He's gone, you know, and see him, at, see him at New Year. You know, the 11 year old girl, I'd like to talk to the 11 year old girl, ask her how she feels about her mother, but never being around. But I suspect she'd just say, Shogunai, you know, it can't be helped. And, and oh, I see, I see her sometimes on weekends or something, and they just sort of accept it as being normal. So it's just incredible. I mean, to a lot of people who have come from other cultures and societies and other parents, I mean, if you're a parent, you know, most of us, if we're parents and we work for a company and the company said, we want you to go and live in South Korea for five years, most of us would say, can I take my family? And if they said no, we'd say, well, sorry, I'm not going to do that. And then the company would either have to keep us where we were, you know, let us stay where we were, where we could still live with our families, or, you know, give us accommodation in the in the other country so that we could take our families with us. Or we'd quit, wouldn't we? You know, there's not many jobs that you could have 
way you wouldn't quit. And that's what amazes me about these guys too. It's not like their jobs are really amazing. Like these, these three, three, three examples I gave you, all those people are highly qualified, you know, professional people who could get other jobs. You know, it wouldn't be hard for them to get other jobs, you know, and, and most of us in that situation would just say, well, you know, I'm not leaving my family. You know, I'm not leaving my family. I quit and we'd go get another job, wouldn't we? And they just don't. They just don't. We, we've heard this transfer story a million times and it's just normal here. And the companies, because it's normal, the companies don't hesitate. You know, they transfer people. We know another guy that worked, he lived in uh, Atsugi. Atsugi's near to Tokyo. And same sort of story. He was living there and he had his family there and his parents and his cousins and he lived lived in Atsugi all his life and his whole family was, was there and his life was there. That was his life. And he was really comfortable there and they just went, right, you're gone. And they, they sent him to um, to Nagoya. Off you go. And he just went. And, and it's because this is all normal here that the companies just don't hesitate. They they just treat people like it's a chess game. You know, we need a guy over here, we'll send him over here. We know another guy, works for the same company as the Utsugi guy, and he got sent to the USA. And that, that's the other thing they'll do, the international companies will just send people, okay, you've got to go work in our branch in the USA for the next two years, off you go. You've got to go and work in our branch, you know, in Singapore or China or, oh, China, that was the other one. We know a guy that got transferred to China for a couple of years. And he was, he was pretty honest about it. He didn't like it at all. Didn't like the food, didn't like the life. Because life in China and life in Japan are really different, of course. And really unhappy, but again, just did it. All right, I'm off. I've been transferred. See you later. And these people just disappear. <laughs> the ones that we know that have been transferred, they just disappear and you don't see them again. Because, you know, they go and then they come back for a week or two a year at New Year. Usually around New Year they get holidays. And they'll come home at New Year for a week or two. And of course they've only got a week or two, so we don't get to see them. They come back and see their families for a week or two and then they disappear again. It's just, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I mean, it's just heart-wrenching just hearing about it sometimes. You know, from our, from our point of view, if you put, you put yourself in their, in their position and imagine how you'd feel about it, I mean, most of us would just not do it. We'd just not do it. I mean, the nearest, the nearest equivalent that I could think of to this is, is being jailed. You know, when people get put in jail for five years and they don't get to see their families except during visiting hours, or, you know, once a month or something, and, and that's it. They're just isolated off in a small room. And that's pretty much what this is. Because most of these transfers, they have apartments for them and usually they're company apartment buildings. I mean, they're not like a jail cell, but they're a single, you go from living with your family and seeing your kids and your family every day to living in a one bedroom apartment in another country. And they're just zombies when they live in those countries because what, what happens is that they've got nothing else to do but work. So they get up in the morning and they go to work and they come back at night and you can see the parallels with prison, can't you, from our point of view. You know, go to work in the morning, come home at night, sleep in the, you know, watch TV, you know, get up in the morning, go to work, come back at night, watch TV, and it's just, that's it. That's it, never see your family. So, so the reason for this, I mean, just two reasons. One is, you know, it's a mind blower. If you come and live in Japan, you'll hear these stories for sure. Live, live in Japan long term, you'll meet people and, and make friends with people who'll have these stories. And it's, it's just amazing. And they just go, see ya, I'm off. I've been transferred to, you know, wherever. Egypt, I'm off. Saudi Arabia, oh, where's the guy? One guy got sent somewhere in the Middle East recently. Just, I'm off, see ya. And you don't see him again, they're gone. It's just, it's just so inhuman, you know. We've talked about the hive thing before, and we've talked about the robots thing. And it's just so much like that often here where they just transfer people like they're a robot. Oh, we need this robot in that location, all right, off he goes. And everybody, all the family and friends just look to go, bye, see ya, and then just like they never existed. So the two reasons, one is it's just an amazing example of the different culture here, you know, I mean, compared to what, what we expect in another country or another culture when it came to this sort of thing. It's just miles apart, isn't it? 
Uh, that's one part of it. And the other part was because the topic is being married to a Japanese person and you've got to be really aware of this one. Because if your, your partner works for a big Japanese company that has overseas branches, this is a really real possibility. And there's a really, really small chance that, that they might, they might, you might be able to go with them, but more likely you won't. That's really rare. We don't know any. Just gave you a whole heap of examples of the, the, the one person just disappearing. Usually it's the husband. So we just gave you a whole heap of examples of the husband just disappearing. Well, I don't know any examples of, of the, the family going with them. Sorry. You know, it probably happens. It does probably happen. They probably do sometimes send family, but I don't know any examples of it. And I know lots and lots of examples where they didn't. So you just have to uh, be aware of this one and nobody would understand if, if your husband got transferred to another country or maybe your wife. I mean, one of those examples was a lady, wasn't it? A university lady. So if your partner suddenly got transferred to another country and you didn't like it, nobody would give you any sympathy because it's normal for them. See, it's another one of those examples where you know, we wouldn't like it, but it, but everybody else around you would consider it normal, and nobody else would, nobody would give you any sympathy or anything. They just go, "Well, that's normal." You know, gambare. That's what they'd say. Do your best, put up with it, live with it. So, company transfers. There's a topic. Amazing, isn't it? More videos coming soon.